I've been doing that now for about 17 years as a freelancer, which was two years before I graduated with a computer science degree. We just tried to educate people on the space, about how to get into the space, how to make money, how to preserve money. I've realised I'm not just a technologist, I'm really a people person who loves socialising with this kind of entrepreneurial need and desire. All of you are from an ethnic background and 22% of ethnic minorities make up the entire tech industry. The, the tech space is made up of 3% black individuals. Good afternoon, everybody. I know it's been a long day, but how are you doing? Apologies for my mask, Flea. Can you hear me okay? Brilliant. Okay, so I have the pleasure of hosting this or moderating this panel on Tech Talks. Um, so we've got some really amazing people here, but just by way of introduction, my name is Lorraine Wright. Um, I have a portfolio career, so I currently work at Meta um, in the community partnership space. I've also started and failed a number of different businesses where I've raised investment. I um, also now sit on the board as a non-executive director of an agritech startup based in Ghana, which is Google-backed, um, and have a number of different side hustles. Um, and um, I'm looking forward to get into this conversation really around how people could be, actually get into the tech space, um, stay there, but also have people that you can open the door and leave open um, to, to get into the tech space just like you. But by a show of hands, how many of you are actually in a tech space right now? Okay. Okay, so I would say 70% six, six, of the people in the room today, which I think is great. And the others that are not part of the tech space, are you just interested in getting into the area? Um, what's the, the thoughts? You're interested in getting into the tech space. Okay, you're interested. Okay, that's, that's great to know in terms of how we could actually divert um, this conversation. So I'll start with Shandeep. I'd love to just hear who you are, what you do. Do that in two minutes for me. Well, I could probably do it much <laughs> quicker if you need, but... Um, I'm Chandeep Kosa. Um, I am effectively many things, but uh, from a career perspective, you could say I'm a web developer. Um, I've been doing that now for about 17 years as a freelancer, which was two years before I graduated with a computer science degree. And I've pretty much been self-employed almost that whole time. I've worked for a couple of other organizations in between. It's led me to work on projects for building websites for Oxford and Cambridge University, Westminster University, uh, Tate Art Gallery, building websites for the United Nations, a couple of other ones as well. But I think really who I am through a lot of those experiences, I've realized I'm not just a technologist. I'm really a people person who loves socializing with this kind of entrepreneurial need and desire. And what I'm currently doing is turning that into my new creative digital agency, which is called Two Tukens. And through that, scaling a team and building a group of people from as many underrepresented groups as possible with a focus to bringing in designers, marketeers, and people to help me with sales and marketing so I can continue delivering as much impact for uh, socially purpose-driven organizations. Thank you so much. And there's a lot of things I want to unpick from what you've just said, but we'll come back to you. Michael, we spoke a little bit downstairs and you spoke about so many different things. So I want to hear a little bit about what you do um, and what you're about. Okay, um, name is Michael Babatunde. Most people call me Michael Babs. Um, it's easier to remember, it's easier to say. So what do I do? A um, couple of things. I have a company called Skiltific. In Skiltific, we have a portfolio of brands and these brands, um, one of them focuses on like blockchain technology, cri the cryptocurrency space, Web3. And we just try to educate people on the space, like how to get into the space, how to make money, how to preserve money, and even just know what's coming in terms of like blockchain technology and the impact it's going to have on all our lives. And we also have um, another platform called Automation Switch. And Automation Switch looks at um, emerging technologies and futuristic technologies. And we try to provide coverage on how these technologies are impacting us now. And we try to look at how we as people can tap into opportunities, protect ourselves when it comes to security, um, and also just learn, you know, how we can teach people, te obviously teach ourselves, and how we can make money, how we can profit, how we can survive in an ever-changing world. So that's automation switch. And on top of that, I do like cloud engineering as well. When I say cloud engineering, we just, what's the best way to describe it in a non-techie way? So we help websites and applications stay online. So that's the easiest way to describe some of the things I do. Brilliant. There is a lot there as well um, that you've been speaking about, especially the blockchain, but we'll come back to that. Abo, let's hear from you. Um, I love the hair, by the way. Thank you. Uh, and the glasses. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> tell us more about yourself. Before that, I hope that's at least enough of an indication that you don't have to have like <laughs> yeah. you know, clean cut hair to work in tech or something like that. But just a little bit about me. Uh, currently, in my day-to-day -day role, I work as what's called a product designer at The Guardian. And uh, what does that really mean? So I run between research, UX, 
that's user experience design and user interface design. So taking projects from end to end. I've been there for about two years, but prior to that, I've also sort of worked as a freelancer. Uh, I ran a design agency uh, doing branding product, which is apps or web-based stuff. And, you know, just really kind of thinking about users across all of those, but also thinking about innovation as well. And yeah, I think I'm going to keep it there. Yeah. Simple. I, I mean, your hair for me just stole the show. Like, you know, <laughs> your hair looks like my hair when I'm out the shower. <laughs> <laughs> but um, do you know what? Something about the tech space is that all of you are from an ethnic background and 22% of ethnic minorities make up the entire tech industry. And, you know, the two of you sitting there and myself as well in the tech space, you know, the tech space is made up of 3% black individuals. Now, I want to understand from yourselves a little bit about your background. Why did you venture into the tech space? I'll start with you, Shandeep, because I picked up the fact that you said that you studied computer science. Why? Just tell me a little bit about your background, how you kind of entered into the space. So I think it actually goes back to when I was building Lego, when I was building jigsaw puzzles, right? It's some of us develop those kind of problem-solving skills. And I think if you've got some of those skills, it's possible that you might be quite good in tech and related STEM subjects. But I think for me, building beyond that, uh, in 1996, we got our first computer, uh, Windows 95. And somehow it was exciting. I got into it. I learned a bit of stuff. I kept filling up the hard drive and I was playing this pinball machine. But back then there was no internet. I'd get the subscription to a CD-ROM thing and then like play the pinball game and Civilization. That was a game changer, right? Through Civilization, you know, you're playing games, uh, you're learning about different cultures and languages. I'm still learning stuff now. It's like uh, from the Ottoman Empire, this word from Persian, which connects in Punjabi and loads of stuff like that. I think really it, it came from that fascination of having this computer, learning more about it, and then tinkering with it. And then when I wanted to play the Tomb Raider game, I had eight mega RAM and that needed like 32. So then I had to add this RAM, but the guy who came around, he spent like half an hour, stuck it in and we had to pay him like 60 quid. And I was like, oh. So I actually ventured into doing a little bit of computer repair and stuff first on the way. And that eventually kind of, that tech path just continued. I think going back to what I was doing at school, in 1999, I had a floppy disk. By this time, I had Quake on my computer with the new upgraded RAM. And there were some Quake cheats at, at school that I'd found on the internet. You explain what Quake is for some uh, people that might not even... You, so what's Quake? What's Quake? <laughs> okay. Exactly. So Call of Duty, basically, for people that don't know. Well, um, but yeah, basically, I, there were Quake cheats on, on the website, but I wanted to get them home and I didn't have internet. So I could have printed it. Uh, what I decided to do was save the HTML file onto my floppy disk, took it home, put it in, and then I clicked on this like view source and then I had the HTML. Mm. So I could see the code and saw the word red. Mm. I was like, what happens if I turn that to blue? Oh, and then somehow I learned HTML and well, that's how that journey started of learning to customize and tweak websites. And it all kind of was this connected journey I used to fix computers for my teachers at school. I was good at the software, not so good at all the hardware, but my friend from Latvia, he was like the screwdriver guy, I was the software guy. I did more of the sales, got the work in, and when there was a hardware job, we'd turn up. And I think those early entrepreneurial seeds were there when I was 16, and you know, I basically started doing IT support and then that led to web development later, but it's, that's kind of how I started, I think. Wow, a very varied um, path towards that journey of, of tech. I'll, I'll come back to that, but Michael, I think when we were speaking earlier, you said that you started your career in product design. So how did you enter into the whole product design space? I see you nodding your head there because you're in that whole space as well, right? So, and tell people that don't know what product design is as well. So product design is literally the design of anything. My last projects at uni was to design a chair and what I tried to design before it's time as well I tried to design like you know those gaming chairs but um but it was way off what a gaming chair is now but that was the concept at the time so essentially product design is just desi designing anything could be you're innovative and you're designing something completely from scratch something that um, hasn't been designed before or you could be just taking incremental changes to like modify a product so I don't know you may see cars like BMWs that like, over time you can see that how they've changed and you may get I don't know, design of a car where it's just bang, start from scratch. To answer your question, product design is design of anything. Okay, yeah. so just tell us into how you kind of ventured into that space. Just tell us on that about that journey. So okay. how you, you started your career in product design, right? Did you just 
jump from what war were you studying at uni? Okay. Did you just jump into that space? Did you did, did you go through a different line? Like how did you get there? Okay, okay so last year of uni, um, we were introduced to electronic publishing. So we started learning about HTML, um, Photoshop, Illustrator, and design. And that's just, just something I, I took to because I, I have a creative side as well. So it allowed me to express creativity but combine that with technology. So when I left uni, I went on to study um, visual communication. So what I started doing was um, design, like doing graphic design for people. Then from there, I started, um, it went to website design. So I would do like the front end design, UX design as well. When I was doing like the, the front end design, then I got like a, I started working with a, a web developer and he wasn't really good. He wasn't delivering the way I wanted him to deliver. Wasn't me. So I said, you know what? I'm going to learn this stuff myself. Then I started building websites for people. Then when I started building websites, I realized, hold on, some of the websites I'm building for people, they're making more money than I'm making. You know, I need to get into the product side of building websites. So from there, whilst I was building websites for people, I went on to start actually managing like, the hosting of websites. So when you deploy a website, it goes on um, a series of files. These files are on a server somewhere. So I learned how to manage the actual servers. Then from there, um, it just kept on getting deeper and deeper and more technical. Then from there, I learned how to um, do cloud computing and managing infrastructures in the cloud. Then from there, I started working for enterprise companies, managing their infrastructures. But whilst I've always done that, I've always just had like my own businesses and my own um, products that I've been building on the side as well. So that's just a bit of my journey. So we'll come back to you. Abo, you're now at Guardian. You've done UX, you've done product design. Tell us about how you got there. Yeah, interesting story. There's a part where I was like, is this guy living my life? Because I also did product design at uni and then I went to do communications design later on as well. So I was like, wait, hold on a minute. What's happening here? But um, I, I, I like to take it a little bit back because you probably understand this and maybe other people in the room. So I come from a very traditional Nigerian background and what that means is basically if you're going to uni there's only about four things you can do whether you're a medical doctor an engineer lawyer, a lawyer or an accountant. accountant anything else you're a failure right it doesn't even make sense it doesn't matter i remember like not doing great at college at all but i'd applied to actually study uh, engineering product design and at some point arts right and my dad was like what this doesn't make sense but I remember going to uni and I was going for my interview and I had taken the course product design, right? And my dad came to London with me at the time to see the lecturer. And then I had all these really kind of technical drawings I had done. And the lecturer was like, you know what, actually, I'm going to give you engineering product design instead of the product design course. And you can imagine how excited my dad was just because the engineering got added to the start of that. I think that was the sort of first part. And like, I think the process of just understanding how things work, how you develop ideas, just creating anything was the kind of initial exciting part. But I, I kind of just, I didn't, not that I hated the engineering, but I just didn't like, it just didn't gel after a while. So when I left uni, the part that always got me was the design part. Every time we did anything, we needed to kind of present that. And somehow I just always enjoyed it. It wasn't great, but I enjoyed it. And so when I left uni, I went to do design for visual communications and at the end of that my final project I really wanted to do something that's very digital based so I thought about an app but we hadn't done anything on that course at all so I went to the library and I saw this book and it says UX design and I picked it up and I saw this like sketches of like apps design and things like that I thought I'm just gonna follow what I can see here and actually that was my initial kind of start of like oh this is a very interesting thing I got to do that design the app I saw a software as well called Adobe XD, if anyone knows that. And I sort of started with that. And that was sort of an initial kind of starting point into kind of getting into design. But at that time, it was a bit of mixing everything up. So it was like graphics, UX, UI, a bit of web design as well, uh, building WordPress sites and things like that. And then it just became technical, like you said, as well. So you started to kind of think hold a minute, I'm designing all these things, but what do users really think about what I'm designing? And that became a really important factor for everything I was doing. Like, can we get more into research? Can we understand how users are feeling? Can we help users better navigate these platforms and things like that? And that was how my career just kind of went more into that sort of area and then uh, turned out that you can actually make money uh, with this. And here I am. <laughs> Dude, I love that. 